Welcome to our debate on question two, that's the legalization of marijuana. We have Joe Bresny here on the pro side, and Jeff Zinsmeister is here on the anti side. Let me start with you, sir. I mean, I guess what a lot of people might wonder is, what's the big deal? No, absolutely. Look, you get a lot of that. Look, everybody's, you know, people already smoking weed, so why not, why not legalize it? I mean, that's where you, I think you get into the, the, the nitty gritty of, you know, the, the sort of the ideas, the sort of good intentions, and then what's really in question two. I think that's also why you've seen, frankly, the support for question two slides so much, people figuring out what's in it. But point is, it's the, the differences between this idea of, look, well, we can tolerate people using it. What's, you know, let's not throw people in jail for smoking a joint on a Friday night. The difference between saying that and having what you have with question two, which is, you know, let's turn it into, you know, the next tobacco industry. Let's turn it into a industrialized, commercialized, advertised product that doesn't come in just, you know, your friendly little joint anymore. That's also with, you know, these kid-friendly products, these concentrates, et cetera, that, that are made and, and advertised by companies whose bottom line depends on selling them. Let me just stop you for a second there, because basically what you said, I'm going to let you respond to this in a minute, Mr. Bresny, is that you're not necessarily opposed so much to the actual legalization of marijuana, but you think there's these like giant predatory industry that is going to spring forth from this that's going to prey on children with edibles. I mean, isn't that the case you're trying to make? Well, it's really more the, it's the, the distinction between like decriminalizing the substance and turning it and commercializing it and industrializing it. And in fact, with question two, it's I mean, America. Well, ever hear of capitalism? I mean, they, well, well, yeah, but this we're talking about. We're not talking about oven mitts here. We're talking about an addictive substance that has real consequences for society. And that's where you I mean you look at question two. I mean, that even takes it a step further, where they're not only saying let's make an industry out of it, but they're saying, look, if you want to grow a you know a marijuana plant in your house within 25 miles of one of their stores, it's actually going to be an arrestable offense. Okay. Well, let me. That's the difference. Let me let me ask you, Mr. President. You've heard this comparison to the mm -hmm. tobacco industry before. Your your actual uh, proposition is to regulate marijuana, like, like alcohol. alcohol yeah. You're talking about like alcohol. Why isn't tobacco the better analogy? <laughs> well, the funny thing about uh, the big tobacco analogy that they're having is, um, I mean, first of all, they, they took a poll and they figured out that that'll scare people. So everything you hear coming out of them is gloom and doom. Well, both and sides scare took tactics. polls. I'm sure you took a poll or two. Sure, we take okay. lots of them. All but right. but that's why they're saying that the big tobacco comparison. But if you take an honest look. At marijuana. You know, we have over 200 medical marijuana licenses in Nevada right now. If you look at the current system nationally, Jeff represents big marijuana. He represents big marijuana prohibition because you've got two real forces in the illegal black market. You have cartels and criminal gangs, which is what gets propped up by the system. And then you have Jeff who worked, I mean, Jeff brags on his website, on his resume, that he ran a $55 million program within this marijuana prohibition. And so that's the big marijuana right now. These are second, small though. business people. Uh, let me, let me, I don't want to do any kind of ad hominem on, on, on Jeff Sinsmeister or his group. I want you to make the case yeah. why this is a good idea. For, for instance, sure. do you agree with him that marijuana is an addictive substance? Oh, uh, the, the doctors it's, have told us it's habituative. It's habit forming. It's not physically. Most of addictive. the doctors in the state that organized opposite are organized in opposition to this. Well, the organized opposition is funded ninety five percent by one person. Mm -hmm. So to say there's broad based opposition to this is kind of who a was joke. that one person in case people Sheldon are wondering? Sheldon Adelson. Yeah. Okay. He, he wrote a check for a couple million or two checks for a million dollars each so far. And so I mean, you've got one person who's doing this as a pet project. They're flying in guys who speak three languages and ran these huge, huge programs from out of state to oppose are, this. Are you against uh, bilingual or trilingual people too? <laughs> no, is no, that no. part of your campaign? No, they're, they're <laughs> flying in the Michael Jordans of marijuana prohibition to oppose us. I mean, it's obvious that they're worried that this is going to pass. And, and it's because we've been telling the story for a while here in Nevada. We've been, been uh, honestly explaining that medical marijuana regulation is a better way, that alcohol prohibition failed, that marijuana is safer than alcohol. And, and so this is a better way. And the people that we're talking about getting into this are the people that are in the medical marijuana industry now. The people who met that really high regulatory bar that we established just like we did for gaming, just like we do for the things that we regulate so well here. Right. So to say that the current system, which is what they're arguing for, what's their plan? This, what we have, because we have decriminalization. Their argument is for the status quo where African-American kids get arrested at a rate four times higher in Nevada than white kids, even though they consume it at the same rate. I mean, the current system sucks. It sucks for college kids who can't get into law school if they get a citation, for All kids right. who can't go to work as a cop if they get a citation. Right. It's unfair. All right. Um, 
respond to, 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 well, to what he's, are, are you the Michael Jordan or the Scottie Pippen? I mean, I'm Street? flattered. I'm sure. It's <laughs> like, you know, please go on. In fact, if we want to do ad hominem, I'm fine with that too. I mean, look, you're also talking to the guy who makes his money as a, as a marijuana industry lobbyist here. So, you know, if we want to talk about who stands to really gain personally and financially from this, it's the guy sitting on the other side here. It's not the guy who joined a nonprofit from, you know, previously with, you know, one of the major Again, consulting I, companies. I, I, so, I, listen, I don't think there's any question that a lot of people in the medical marijuana business want this legalized to make money. Again, it's America. That, 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 that's okay. So we can, now that we've dispensed with the ad hominem uh, uh, attacks, and we know that I'm the only decent person sitting here today, uh, <laughs> respond to what he said, please. <laughs> exactly. No, look, I mean, well, first of all, I'd be happy to talk about, the, you know, the, the cartel element here. I mean, one of their big, their big talking points is, and it sounds very nice, is, look, we're going to move this out of the hands of, you know, gangs and drug dealers, and we're going to move it into the, you know, sort of this clean, legalized system. Move it out of the shadows and into the light, That's right? right? That's the, 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 the turn right. of phrase. What we know, though, is from the experience in Colorado is that it just hasn't, it's just contrafactual. It just hasn't happened. What you've seen is, instead of having one replace the other, you see... The, these two parallel systems, the black market continues or even expands. I mean, you want to look at the number of organized crime filings in the state of Colorado. They've been ticking up steadily. Uh, you want to look at the, 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 the crime or the drug and the drug crimes in Denver. They've also been steadily increasing since legalization. So it's not that you've replaced one with the other. You've kept the black market, which exists because you've taxed the legal product. This is a really interesting point. Right? And, and I was, Colorado obviously is not Nevada. Uh, there are a lot of differences. However, it is a place where you have this crucible to look at what legalization looks like. And mm -hmm. I was going to, you know, cite all kinds of statistics to say whether it's been successful or not there. But they're all contradictory. Like what he said, the, the number of filings he's talking about are, are, are true in Colorado. What what is the positives that you take out of the Colorado experience to bring to Nevada? You see 68% fewer citations, marijuana citations for adults over 18. And so that allows the police, each one of those costs between one and $2,000 in costs for prosecuting that and, and policing that. And so those are resources that are freed up. When 68% fewer of those happen, those are resources that are freed up to police things like the home grow law that they have in Colorado that's much more generous than ours and has created the bulk of their issues. The, the retail price of marijuana Marijuana has gone from $350 on the black market to $99 specials in the regulated market that's tested. And so if you look online at uh, marijuana cartels tortillas, some of the cartels are pulling up their marijuana plants and planting corn, and they're avoiding the taxes by putting tortillas into the black market in Mexico. They're shifting. Now, what you see is home grows, where some people are exploiting that home grow provision, but we've been criticized because we don't have that provision. But 70% uh, of the black market's gone from Denver and from Colorado, and we estimate that 90% of it will be gone from here, and the remaining black market will shift to some of the actors that will be trying to grow a few plants in their garage, and then we can focus on keeping this out of the hands of kids and, and on those remaining pockets I thought he was the protecting the Nevada's children no, guy. No, no, that's uh, us. That, that's the name of the girl. I mean, uh, the, 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 I mean what ha let's, let's talk about what you think. This way. He just told you what he thinks it would look like if this gets legalized. What is your, what is your view, which I, th I assume is much more apocalyptic and dark, <clears throat> of what it would look like if marijuana is legalized in Nevada? Tell me. Oh, well, first let's get away. I mean, uh, the apocalyptic thing is, I, it's an interesting talking point by the pro side. I said, well, there hasn't been the apocalypse in Colorado as if that's the, that's the, the standard of success is that this you know that there's not some sort of you know collapse of the system there I mean but let's look at really what's happened I mean the data is quite clear I mean it, we, we know first of all that on the, the roadways are a lot less safer in Colorado now I mean you've seen and because this, people this, are driving after having smoked pot and and, and but well but but the, 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 the medical evidence on that is very inconclusive now I admit that compared to alcohol there's not as much medical evidence but there's it is inconclusive in terms of whether or not pot will impair your motor skills when you're driving, right? I mean, I would just, as also a bit of a common sense, too, if anybody's ever been in a car with somebody who's been, who's, you know, smoked marijuana. I, I personally just, wouldn't want to do it. Know, I wouldn't want to drive in with somebody. But, but, yeah. but, I, but I'm just saying, I just think the medical evidence is right. not as conclusive as it is with alcohol. You know, but we do know, though, is that you're having these, what industrialization and commercialization allows is the, the production of super potent products that don't exist, that, that didn't exist before. The concentrates that, whose, you know, potency exceeds 90%, the edible products, which are now over half of the market in, in, in Colorado, because they're, frankly, they're profitable. Um, they have potencies that are far beyond the flour that people, you know, people used to smoke. Those have impairment, I mean, the impairment that comes from that is a very different, longer lasting, more intense type of impairment. And I think that's, it's no surprise that you see that translating into roadway fatalities. That having been said, I mean, you don't have to believe me, you can believe AAA that's, you know, come out against these measures specifically for that reason. 
Um, you're also seeing a lot more exposure to kids, frankly. Again, it's just you're diversifying the product mix. It's being advertised. But prohibition it's, doesn't work. It has, not, it has never worked see, in the history talking, of the world. But see, that's the point is we're not talking about the black and white. Well, it's prohibition. I mean, I know I'm not saying like it's black and white. No, I'm, I'm, I don't think this is a black and white issue. I will say that up front. Sure. Sir. But prohibition. Uh, does not seem to have worked, and that's why they're using alcohol, obviously, partly. But it doesn't work, does it? Well, you see, this is where we're. This is why I like to, to say it's not black and white, because our organization is not standing out there and saying we want mass incarceration as the model. And in fact, I mean, I'm flattered that you think I was jumping out of helicopters in New Mexico. I was, you know, managing anti-corruption programs for the most part, which I think I don't think anybody would argue are, are a bad thing. I mean, the point is, is that it's not a choice between let's lock them up and let's have, you know, let's have storefronts. It's why don't we focus on, I mean, and I wish that there would be, you know, people were raising money to sort of focus on, look, why don't we find these third ways where we're not, we're not incarcerating what about and we're that? not legalizing. What about That's that? That's not happening. Oh, a, a few things. Money First is. of all, they talk about how uh, child exposure has shot through the roof, but what they don't say is that it's gone up to 47 uh, kids. Now, we don't want a single kid ingesting a marijuana edible and going to the emergency room, but if you compare that to the 1,400 kids who ate the Tide laundry pods or drank Drano or cleaning products in the same period, um, those can actually kill the kids. And so it seems disingenuous that they're just focusing a light on something that's not But why is that really even the analogy, Drano and eating it, and eating it edible? Oh, because they're, they're talking about emergency room visits with kids. But, but I and that's far, far more of a risk. It's it, something that can actually hurt them. It seems to me the real risk here, and I, and I wonder what your answer is to this. Even though, I, I, as I said, the medical evidence is not as conclusive mm -hmm. about what happens to your motor skills mm -hmm. after smoking pot. Uh, don't you agree that more people will drive after having smoked a joint than, than, than they are no. now? You no. don't think no. they will? Absolutely not. Uh, for a couple reasons. First, the data proves it. If you look at the Las Vegas Review Journal's graph, which isn't exactly... Isn't that owned by Sheldon Adelson? Exactly. It's not, it's not exactly an advocate for our side, but they had a graph that showed marijuana DUIs have gone down year after year in Colorado. They are, it's a number. It's going down. And, and it makes sense because if you think about it, marijuana is illegal, but it's not hard to get. So if you're so irresponsible that you're going to light a joint and get behind the wheel of a car, the fact that it's illegal isn't stopping you. People are doing it now, which is why we have the toughest DUI law in the country for marijuana. But the difference between Nevada and Colorado that I think would, might concern people is we have 40 million tourists coming here. And, and I understand that it's good for the, for the market mm -hmm. for, that you're trying to create. On the other hand, there are people who are partying and are going to know, why well, I can smoke a joint too and I can get in the car. It would seem to me that that would be a real th thing to worry about. Well, most of our tourists who come here, even the driving tourists, they come here and park their car on these very large properties and they don't get lit up and drive around. And, and again, what we most, see... Most, not all. It, correct. But what we see, if you talk to law enforcement, if you talk to the folks who are actually policing this, the numbers on marijuana DUIs are minuscule in comparison with alcohol. And we know that that alcohol prohibition failed. It didn't work. And marijuana prohibitions failed. This is just a better way. So law enforcement supports what you're doing. They should. But they don't, We're do allies. they? We're allies. But they well, don't. it's because of budgetary reasons. Mm -hmm. They haven't figured out that they should reallocate the drug money that they get, the drug interdiction money they get, instead of just worrying that without this system, this failed system that, that doesn't have any winners, it just has losers and casualties, th this is something where they this is broken and they don't know what comes next. So they're petrified. All of the retired police tell us the same thing. They're scared about their budgets. That's the reason. It's not because this is the big issue they see on the roads. It's not because this is the big violent crime issue they see. It's because this is what funds their budgets through asset forfeiture and through grants. Uh, this really has to worry you, I would think, a state like Nevada. I mean, here we are. There's still this libertarian ethos that, that, that we have here. You have the Sin City image of, of, of Vegas. If there's any place that should legalize pot, it's Nevada, right? Well, I mean, the polls just don't suggest that. I mean, they've lost, what, 20, 30 points in the last couple of months? The I mean, only poll that counts is the one on Election Day. I hate right. when people say it, but it was the perfect line then. No. <laughs> sure, but otherwise, if, look, if polls didn't count, nobody would do them. I mean, right. So, uh, you know, I mean, look, obviously there's, people have concerns. I think that some of the, it, this is not a libertarian law. I mean, we, I think we can both agree on that. It's not no. something that's focus, focusing on personal it's freedom at all. And so, I disagree with that. Um, you know, so I, I think we've, we're, we're seeing that it's, you know, I, I appreciate that sort of common, sort of common you know, conventional wisdom on Nevada, but I just don't see that dynamic playing out. All right, gentlemen, we, we have just a little bit of time left, and I want to do what I, what I did at the end of the, of the background check debate, just so people are clear. I've already alluded to this with uh, Mr. Bradson, but who's funding uh, you? Sheldon Adelson essentially is funding the entire uh, no campaign. What should people make of that? 
Well, I just think you're seeing, I mean, it's not just him. I mean, other well, people I, I, come on, this, but come sure. On. But I think he represents, you know, biz, people, businesses in Nevada that see this, he's obviously not going to make money off of the, the, the no vote. They see this as a real risk to their business. I mean, if you look at what happens in, with, with marijuana use in the workplace, it's a real liability to employers, unless you're selling, I mean, unless, of course, you, are, you, know, you, you work for the, the, the marijuana industry itself. Um, impairment in the workplace and increased impairment in the workplace is a, not a good thing okay. for businesses. Right. And that's why I think you're seeing it. So uh, as far as your funding goes, it, mm -hmm. it is mostly a group called the Marijuana Policy Project, mm -hmm. and it's the medical marijuana uh, industry yes. here that wants to make money off of it. What, what, why does the Marijuana Policy Project, which has contributed a lot of money to this, mm -hmm. why do they think that's such a good idea? Well, that's, that's why they were formed. I mean, they're but a I know, but what, what, what is the around. argument? What is the argument, though? Oh, marijuana is safer than alcohol, and so we should regulate it like alcohol. It's less damaging to the body. It's less addictive. It's less likely to be associated with criminal behavior, violent behavior. But we treat it in this special criminal class because largely of this, this industrial prohibition that we've gotten used to. And so it hasn't made sense to them. It hasn't made sense to me for decades. And we've just slowly worked to tell the truth about this, all the scare tactics about marijuana. Now, now people can Google most of their claims and find out that they're baseless. So uh, we've come a long way in 20 uh, years. Well, right. Do you mind if I make a comment quick, on the alcohol thing too? The interesting thing is, of course, is that in Colorado, marijuana has not replaced alcohol use. In fact, it has been additive. If you look at the per capita alcohol consumption in Colorado, it has ticked up slightly since legalization. So people, they, they, you know, in sort of common vernacular, they crossfade. Um, a lot of people use them both at the same time. So what you're not seeing is a replacement of one substance by the other. It's you're just adding something on top of the layer cake. If that makes any sense. You want to respond to that or not? Well, I, I mean, th these guys live with uh, causation coming from correlation. I mean, that's their entire basis of existence is saying, well, this is because of this. These guys? Who yeah. are these guys? Oh, Project Sam, uh -oh. scary approaches to marijuana, those guys. So uh, I don't think that's what it, I, the I prefer Sam Michael for. Jackson, actually. Or was it? No, Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. All right. Michael Jordan. Jackson's good, too. Though. Gentlemen, we, we, we want, we're not going <laughs> to solve this today. I want to, I just want, for full for full disclosure purposes, people never believe this. I've never smoked pot. Uh, Jeff's Meister, Joe Bresney. Thanks for coming on. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks for having us. All right.